Yeah, all good. Um, everybody's fit and healthy, so raring to go. Obviously, the, the box three selection has caused a bit of excitement and uh, anticipation. Um, what kind of balance did I have to strike between getting their defensive work nail on and, I guess, showing why they've been picked in an attacking sense? Um, yeah, I think uh, the point you make about defensive stuff is, is crucial for tomorrow. I think in the selection of um, Marin, especially at 12 for, for Italy, they, they, I think they're going to look at distributing the ball a little bit more, getting to the edges a little bit more, which is um, you know, going to put a lot more onus on, on our wingers and 13s, making sure they get their, their, their detail and their decision making right on the edges. Um, but yeah, you know, Lowy's come on leaps and bounds in that area. Uh, Max still learning at international level and stuff. So the communication has been very good this week. Um, and, um, you know, it's exciting times, really, in terms of, of everything. As long as they do the right things at the right time, it'll be OK. Sure. I'm um, just looking back to the, the France game. How did you feel it went overall from your perspective? Yeah, obviously disappointed um, with the end result. You know, we asked the players for a, for a performance and, you know, there's, there's a few details that we we missed or lacked in, in, in the intensity of the pressure and stuff and it's making sure that we correct them this, this week. Um, breakdown's been a, a massive area for us focusing on to generate the type of ball that we want to play off, that we can dictate to the defence what we do. Um, but saying that, you know, Italy are not going to give us an easy, easy street. So it's making sure that we get our detail right in that area. Um, so the likes of Mikey and Lowy um, and Mac can get into the game as well. And uh, Andy touched on yesterday how you know Joey would have plenty of uh, things he picked up and learned last week and looking to implement tomorrow. Can you expand on that a bit? Like what what do you ideally like to see more of from him? Um, again, Joey's just you know he's, he's slowly growing into himself again. You know um, he had a very good performance against against France, obviously, and it's just the next step up for him now. Is is you know, he's got his feet under the table now under the desk and he needs to make sure that he drives to that to that next level. For us, it's about making the right decisions at the right time. It's always been the case for our tens. Um, and then bringing his X factor, which is, you know, he's got a very good running game, which we haven't seen um, too often of over the past sort of, well, he's been injured a lot of the time, I suppose. But, um, you know, he's very good at attacking the line. Um, so again, areas like that, but only if it's the right thing to do. And making sure that he controls um, controls the the area, so we're not uh, we're not playing too much rugby in key areas too. Thanks, best of luck. Thank you. Hi, Mike. Hi. Hey, Ed Elliott, PA. Uh, a lot has been made about Italy's long losing streak in this competition, and obviously there was, there was a statement from the tournament organisers last week about their participation. With all that going on, how do you how do you ensure that Ireland's players don't underestimate the challenge that's in front of them this weekend? Um, I think that's driven internally with the players. You know, Pete as, as captain tomorrow has, has really driven that. Um, you're playing for your country. It's exactly what you you want to do. You know, Mikey's getting his first cap. Dan Sheehan's getting his first start. So these these little milestones are, are massive for individuals, and it's. Um, and again, it's about inspiring the nation, making sure we get our nation behind us. And if we keep keep making sure we put in the performances that, that the nation can be proud of, um, you know, we don't underestimate any of the opponents that are coming coming to Aviva. So um, we know it's a proper test match tomorrow. We know what Italy can bring, how disruptive they can be. Their kicking game's very good. So it's making sure that we we put our processes in place and make sure that we we go out and play the way we want to play. And just as a follow-up to that, the results suggest that there's obviously a gap there between Italy and the other five nations. How do you view that? How far behind do you think they are? Yeah, I mean, Italy are, again, a very very young side. They have got some some exciting players in there. You know, the back row, um, Lamarra, the captain, who's exceptionally passionate and, and a very good rugby player. Now they've got uh, Corbisi, obviously, and... and um, Marin now at 12. Um, so these guys are all, all young and they're still trying to learn their trade and it's very, very tough 
when you know to learn your trade when you're getting beaten every weekend too from a confidence point of view but I think the way that that Kieran Crowley wants the game to be played um, is definitely shining through but it does again it takes time and, and, and experience for that to happen. Sunday, you know, um, can you tell me the, the, the journey that you're on regarding the attack shape that Ireland are using? How far along do you think you are, and are you happy with the rate of progress, especially in the last 12 months? Um, yeah, I mean, you're happy when it goes well all the time, but there, there are key fundamentals in there that need to go right for us to attack the way we want to attack. Um, and I think a lot of people have put a lot of emphasis on our attack, but you know, a lot of the tries, you know, a couple of tries we scored against Wales was down to our defence is the reason we scored those tries. So it's it's a combination of the two. Is, is try scoring defence is, is crucial for us too, is making sure we go and get that ball back and let's be brave in what we do and go and get the ball back. So um, our attacking stuff is all about decision making and work rate. And, you know, so far the boys have um, done pretty well with it. But there's still a lot of understanding um, to be had, um, especially in the in the heat of a battle, in the heat of the, the pressure of a test match, making sure that we're able to continually stay calm and make the right decisions on the back of the pictures we see. So it's um, we we we're getting there, we're slowly getting there, but um, you know we'll keep developing as we go. Speaking of developing, most people accept that they nick stuff off other people it's a very little originality in the world I'm not saying you don't have any original thought but how do you marry the two and, and, and are you always scavenging around and looking for stuff or, or what's your mindset on that? Um, you do what suits your team really you know as, I think as a, as a coaching group we're united in everything we, we do you know there's, there's, there's no silos within the coaching group we all understand how attack works how defence works how kicking game works um, and we're all able to drive that. So, um, but like I say, there are key fundamentals for us to to get right first. Um, and we have been very good in in November. We we're very good in certain areas, and we dropped off a little bit against France. So we need to make sure we we bring those areas back into our game for us to to generate what we're good at. Sound. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Stewart, my boy here, Virgin Media. How are you? Good. Thanks, Stu. How are you? Very well indeed. Like a quick word on Mikey Lowry. Andy said how impressed he was since he's come in. As an attack coach, what's impressed you most about him and why is he getting his chance tomorrow? I think a nice thing about these young guys that are coming in is is they have no baggage with them. You know, they 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 play with no fear. They they go out and they they love Mikey loves doing what he does. And it's really infectious and it and it drives people around him um, to have that same feeling. I think it's crucial that players can come in like Mikey and play the way he wants to play you know and Andy's created this environment the players have created this environment um, for these players to be able to come in and do that and, and that's what we want from Mikey we don't want anything different from Mikey the nice thing about Mikey is because he's exceptionally quick and he's got quick feet and everything sometimes he could probably get a little bit frantic and in, 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 in his mind and stuff whereas He's calmed down massively and in terms of he's a very good distributor of the ball and he fits into us the way we flow in the game. And, um, you know, he's, he's been seamless in that, that transition for him. So, you know, all credit to him. Um, and like we say, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy and he's fitted in perfectly. So, you know, it's up to the rest of the boys to make sure that his, his job is mega easy tomorrow. Yeah, you say he's a very good distributor. He obviously played 10 school, then moved into fullback. How is an attack coach, and he can create something out of nothing, as an attack coach, how do you let him go and do what he does best or else fit into the system? How do you balance that? Well, it's only down to the decisions he makes. If, if the right thing is for him to pass the ball every single time he sees a picture, then that's the right thing for the team. That's the best thing for the team. If it's on for him to have a go, you know, if, if Italy are going to kick long and it's, he sees that it's just joined to defence, you know, he's going to have a go himself because it's the right thing to do. And I think that's that's where you know we've still got a, a a massive way to go in terms of our decision making, making sure that every decision is the right decision and and we make it the right decision at the end of the day. But 
yeah, there's there's no shackles on uh, on Mikey tomorrow. He can he can go and do what he wants to do. Great stuff. Let's hope he goes well. Thank so you. do I. <laughs> Hi, it's Michael Corcoran here. I'm just wondering where you see the main threat from Italy tomorrow. Um, I think they um, defensively they've they've definitely tightened up a lot lot better. Their work rate in defensively has been a lot better. Um, that French game that they played, well, the, the game they played against France, they caused chaos at the breakdown, and um, you know they stopped their big ball carriers getting around the corner. So, from that point of view, um, they've definitely tightened up. Um, their kicking game, like I've mentioned, with, with Marin and Garbisi and Padovani now at 15, these guys can kick the ball and kick the ball very well. So they've got a, they've got a, a very good attacking game with the little kicks over the top of rucks. So they keep, they keep you guessing as a defensive team, so you can't switch off against them. And, you know, these games, those balls are going to bounce their way sometimes. And, and you know, we've got to be, be mindful of it and, and make sure we... We adapt accordingly. And how important is it to be patient tomorrow that you sort of build your way into the game, if you understand, rather than get suckered into a kind of barbarian-style match in the opening 15, 20 minutes? Well, it's only what the picture they see. It's only what they we get given, you know, and it is. It's, it, it, it is going to be a battle from the start, but, you know, it's making sure that we enforce what we want to put in place. It's, it's crucial we get our breakdown right. It's crucial we get our line speed defense right, we have to pressurize them, get the ball back. These are all things that, that, that need to be in place from, from minute one. There's, there's no relenting in anything um, tomorrow. It's a proper test match. We need to go after them.